Hello everyone, good evening from Tokyo. Today I have a great pleasure to speak with Rashmi Purna and she's an empathic life coach. Hello Edward and thank you for inviting me for this interview. It's lovely to connect. So uh, as a new member of Personal Branding Program community, uh, I would like to ask you uh, if you can share uh, about your background and uh, how you became who are you today. Um, that's always a curious question, isn't it? My background as such is um, probably very similar to a lot of Asians that have migrated from India um, and the Indian um, uh, area. My parents, um, my mother was actually born in Africa and my father moved to Africa during uh, the sort of war period, mm -hmm. uh, post-war period. I was born in Zambia. And then we moved to the UK, and then I've been traveling ever since because I'm a bit of a traveler, I'm a bit of a nomad. And I found myself in Spain quite by chance. I had been through a near-death experience. And <clears throat> when I started finding my feet again, um, I thought I had settled back in London, and then Spirit sort of told me that I needed to give everything up and wait for the next step. It was almost like a secret mission. And I thought, what's the next step? I couldn't find a new apartment. I couldn't find anything. They told me then to stop doing the work. And I've always been, well, for over 20 years now, I've been doing reading, guidance, coaching, um, and healing for people. So when Spirit told me to wait for an answer, I was in a little bit of a space like we are in at the moment in the coronavirus, where we've got this unknown thing happening. And I'm not very good with the unknown. I'm a bit of a, <laughs> I need to have plans. <laughs> Even after 20 years, you'd think you'd be uh, learning. Um, so I kept pushing and trying to make things happen and nothing was happening. And then I said, okay, here you are. You do what you want. <laughs> and <laughs> the next day, one of my clients rang me and said, oh, I hear you're leaving London. Where are you going? How can I stay in touch? I said, okay. So he said, let's meet for a coffee. We met for coffee. And he said, I've been meditating and I think I'm supposed to be your next stepping stone. What's he talking about? He gave me keys to his villa in Spain, a, a one-way ticket to Spain, and he's said to me, a friend of his will be picking me up with his car at the airport and I could stay at his villa for as long as I wanted. And for me, having sort of not worked for a couple of years properly, had you know, I had lost my home due to illness and everything else. So I was at this point thinking, do I trust this person? I can't actually even pay him rent. I have just about got through living the last year. Um, and the next thing I knew I was on a plane to Spain, you know, against all my sort of, my spirit was saying yes and my mind was saying no. And when I landed in August, this was, it was boiling hot in the south of Spain. You know, you can't breathe. It's about 40 degrees. And the AC wasn't working in this car. And I had to drive two and a half hours <laughs> along the coast um, to get to the, the villa. And when I got to the villa, it was locked. And all of this, the reason why I'm sharing is it's about how what I teach is about guiding people to trust spirit. Mm -hmm. and to follow your destiny um, and how we trip ourselves up. And because my thoughts all the time were doubting, not trusting, I found challenges on the way all the way to the point that when I got to the villa, the keys he'd given me wouldn't unlock the padlock on the gate. I was fuming and cursing and everything else. And there's a neighbor that had somebody sleeping on the terrace and I asked him if he could help. He came over, broke, broke the lock for me, I got into the house and the house hadn't been occupied for a few years. So it was really dusty. And so I was cursing away. <laughs> and I went to have a shower because I thought a shower will make everything perfect. And there's no water. So again, I was cursing and I went into the street and the man next door said, oh, they've probably just switched the water off. He turned the water off in the street. In the evening, they invited me for dinner. And so that was my first day in Spain. And ever since then, I've been sort of working to trust spirit every day. My process of working has been that I've always been a natural empath. So I feel and sense and hear things from spirit. I feel your energy and I become you when I'm working with you. And that's the way that I do the work. But I'll, I'll stop there right now. That's sort of my introduction. <laughs> And uh, uh, what wake up in the morning? What wakes me up in the morning is either my little Yorkshire Terrier that I rescued last year. Um, she was abandoned and had cancer and she recovered very well. And then at the time I got, I was working with horse therapists um, and animal therapists. And I thought, 
it would be nice for me to have a pet. And the next day I went to my pottery class and the vets walked in and said, we've got a dog that needs a home. Here she is. <laughs> that was sort of literally how I ended up with her. So she's lovely. And so she, she, it's either her that wakes me up because she needs to go out or the sun wakes me up because it's beautiful and bright. Or I have this real need to reach out to my clients and connect with people. Or I just want to jump out of bed, go for a walk in the mountains. So it's, I have so much choice. I love what life is at the moment. So for me, there is an amount, or even run down on the beach, because I'm not that far from the beach, so I could have a run on the beach. So those are the things that wake me up. And uh, what kind of problems you are solving for the people who, who work with you? And maybe even during this uh, pandemic and um, before and, and, and currently, uh, how are you helping them and what kind of problems they have when they want to come and work with you? It's interesting for me. I'm still working on um, sharpening up my niche, but my journey has been a lot about helping people who've been through difficult childhoods mm -hmm. um, and different relationships. The abilities that I have, which are the innate abilities of being an empath, allow me to feel their journey so that I can help them see the opportunity in their obstacles. So the way that I work with people is they start off with an initial session or a consultation. I will read their energy field. I will read their life. I will walk with them through the journey that they've had to date um, and the kind of traumas, the kind of difficulties that are still creating the obstacles in their lives. So I work with energy work, I work with mindset work, work with different concepts in psychology and counselling, um, and I work with things like hypnosis, NLP. Um, the tools are amazing, but the, the main concept is I always come back to the individual's energy and what they're passionate about to help them realign to their purpose. So the outcomes are healthier bodies, healthier relationships, greater, more satisfying, successful careers and businesses, um, you know, journeys where they've never expected them, exciting, fulfilling journeys, you know, and discoveries about themselves that they'd forgotten that those are the kind of outcomes that they have. So my coaching is uh, various programs that I do about healing in the child and uh, trauma, as well as helping people set the foundations up for the new the new create they want to create in their lives so the new what they want to create a new relationship if it's a relationship issue that's coming up I coach them on a regular basis to work with the blocks that they have in our relationships how do you think this uh, social distance like a uh, regulation that we have to keep I don't know one meter two meters from each other how we can support actually children who are now needs to overcome this trauma which is going on it's a double-edged sword Edward it, it's interesting for me because um, I've seen, in, not just in our sort of my close family, but an extended family, um, the, the benefits of it have been that the parents are more available. They're in the house. Mm -hmm. There is more physical contact. There is more interaction. Um, the loss, of course, is that wider circle, the actual teachers, mm -hmm. the actual friends. Those losses are there. But don't forget that our youngsters have been using technologies. The three-year-old, perhaps not so much. But our youngsters, sort of from six out onwards, have been using a lot of technology. My niece, who's six in London, has been doing her homework online since she was about four years old. So she's very much into technology, and she teaches my mum, who's 77, how to use technology. So between the sort of who's now six and, and the 88-year-old, they're learning, they're bridging that, that expanse of communication. They've actually got closer because of that. So some of the children are going to benefit from those tools that we have i.e the internet other children who are in traumatic situations unfortunately they are going to need a session net they are going to need a foundation of people that are available when there is space i would like to see that schools and other um, establishments similar to that are a little bit more awake and educated and prepared to recognize the children that need additional help and support um, so i think it, Informing, educating, and empowering children to understand their emotions, as you said, develop, help them develop that ability to create a deeper emotional intelligence. So you mentioned that you have something on your Facebook page where people can mm. actually see your work. So uh, how people can uh, learn more about you, your methodology, maybe join your one of your uh, 
session? Okay, the, 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 the key session that I have is a Sunday morning. It's 12 o'clock European time, 11 o'clock UK time. It's a free healing session for about an hour mm-hmm. that they can join on Zoom. I normally advertise it on my Facebook, my Instagram, um, and I'll send them to you so you can paste them up. Um, and on my Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, I email and WhatsApp to people who've become clients as well. So anybody that wants to join is free to come and join those healing sessions. Every so often I'll do free challenges. I haven't got anything coming at the moment because I'm busy setting up a YouTube and a Patreon channel, which hopefully will be on my Facebook soon so people can follow those through. Um, I just finished actually a a 30-day free challenge, which was about getting clarity on who you are and where you need to drive yourself sort of thing, walk yourself through. If they connect with me on my Facebook, um, there's always going to be information. I do sort of little vlogs, little, uh, I do live meditations weekly on my Facebook page Mm -hmm. as well. So there's a live meditation on my Facebook page, um, the healing on Zoom, which is every Sunday. Everything is in the process of re being hashed again. (laughs) As you know, we're all evolving. And so for me, probably in the next two weeks, we're going to find a, a, a new sort of branding and a new identity coming out, which uh, has been in the in, in the making for a while. Interesting fact, <laughs> I never treated this as a business. Because I had an ability to help people, I started doing this throughout my life. And around 20 years ago, after the um, uh, first crash that we had financially mm-hmm. <clears throat> and a marriage breakup, I started offering these to people, the readings that I do, the empathic intuitive readings that I do. And my work has taken me around the world just simply by word of mouth. And I've never treated this as a business. And so now I'm learning how to treat it as a business. I'm having to put in all the foundation, (laughs) which is quite shocking for me because I have had an abundance of clients without having to advertise, without having to share. It's just come to me very automatically. So to sort of turn it into a business and be really serious about it is quite a shock to my system because it hasn't been the way that I've lived for a long time. You know, the thing that I would love to do in a way would be to write a book in a foreign language. Mm -hmm. When I came to Spain, I didn't speak Spanish. And within a year, I was speaking Spanish purely through meeting people and and learning. And I've always had a passion for uh, for, for languages. You know, I used to be um, really keen at school to learn things like French and whatever, but I also had a a capacity for science and the family wanted me to study science, so I did the science thing. Um, And I wished in a way that I had to study languages, but now there's nothing stopping me. So for me to actually write a healing or psychology book in, in their language, in a different language, rather than have somebody translate it for me, would be the ideal. That would be my one of my goals. Thank, thank you so much for, for this beautiful interview and thank you for joining uh, our community. So we are looking forward to, uh, for all people who want to j- join your uh, free uh, healing session so they can find the Zoom link uh, on your Instagram or Facebook page. And right. also we, uh, we are looking uh, uh, forward for your new book and everything else you are planning to do for your brand and for helping other people. Please let us know. We are happy uh, to support you, to learn from you and to grow together. Thank you. Thank you, Edward, for the invitation and the interview. I've enjoyed talking to you a lot.